Hi everybody and welcome to another video. It's been a while, I apologize. I've been awfully busy with day job things and uh, well, anyway, let's just get to this video. Today I'm doing an experiment. Last video with the gouache eyes, I mentioned that I wanted to try more expressive color in painting. I tend to limit myself to natural colors when I paint from reference and I wanted to try to break away from that. So here I go. I intentionally chose a black and white photo reference for this portrait study and went for a uh, colorful basically. So you might have noticed that I did start out with a brownish color, but I quickly decided to try to stay away from those. So I decided on purple, magenta and yellow for my main colors and my usual dark made of Prussian blue and burnt umber for the very deepest shadows. I have to admit that for a long part of this painting I had a lot of doubts as to whether I'd be able to achieve anything decent looking. Never mind looking good, let's try to just have something that doesn't look like complete clown barf. But basically I decided to set down some loose rules for this. The light values would be yellow, mid-tones in magenta and the darks in violet with the Prussian blue for the black equivalent. I layered a lot in this piece and made use of the reactivation properties of gouache to re-blend and fix some areas as I went. I also tried to have the values as close as possible to the reference on the first layer but I think I'm not skilled enough to do that kind of painting so I settled for close enough at first and then fixing. I can't see the value of a spot in an absolute way. You kind of need the surrounding elements to compare to get a good idea. It's a little bit like in music when you don't have perfect pitch, which I don't, but you can get the right sound by listening to intervals and such. So I started by blocking in the parts that are clearest to see, like the highlights on the cheeks and the shadows below the brow bones. I left the eyes blank for quite a while because I wasn't sure if I wanted to go with the rest of the color scheme or do something different to make them pop. The forehead is pretty straightforward as well, usually the main part is a light value and then as it recedes to the sides with the curve of the skull, you get darker values. The trick here is to see which side is darker than the other. Unless the lighting comes from directly in front, you'll always have a little bit of variation. Actually, I had some trouble with this on the whole face. The reference photo is slightly brighter on the right side with the deepest shadows on the left, which is why I used my Prussian blue mix on the left side, but I ended up having to brighten up the right side quite a bit anyway. I'm using a small angled brush for most of this by the way. It makes blending a lot easier. My materials, as always, will be listed in the description down below. Now, when I added those red spots below the nose for light shadows, that's when I started having serious doubts. But I pushed forward. It's gouache, it's fixable. I apologize for the jump in perspective here. I had an unexpected Skype call in the middle of painting which froze the filming app on my phone, so I lost a bit of footage and had to restart and reset up everything. This time I made sure to set Skype to do not disturb. I had seriously thought I had lost the footage up to this point. The way that the painting looked at that point made me seriously debate whether to try to finish it, but a friend convinced me it was worth trying, so here I go. So at this point I think I started tweaking and trying to correct the places which were too dark or too light, mostly too dark. Uh, I tried to fix that by adding white, then layering yellow in places to get some saturation back. Uh, 
I'm also starting to add some deep darks with my Prussian blue mixture, which ends up containing more blue than brown in the end, actually. And of course, we can't just stay on the face forever. She's holding her face in her hands, so I'd better paint those. Uh, they were a lot lighter in the reference photo than her actual face. So I'm starting from the highlights here with some bright yellows, then uh, the mid-tones in magenta and adding in some purple for the shadows and blending in to try to get the right mid-tones. I think the biggest challenge that I set myself here inadvertently was that I picked colors on the opposite ends of the color wheel, yellow and purple, and I had to combine them in the middle without having the whole painting ending up like a smear of mud. That's where the magenta helped a lot, I think, as a transition color, and the white as well, toning things down a bit. So here I finally decided what to do with the eyes and painted their shadowy areas with some magenta mixed in with white and later on I used the dark Prussian blue mixture for the pupils and that's when I also decided uh, to do the same for the eyebrows and the hair. Uh, but first there's the other hand left to paint so I gave it the same treatment as the hand on the right starting with the highlights in yellow then uh, purple shadows and magenta and red mid-tones. I think she looks much better with actual eyes and eyebrows, so I also took the opportunity of working around that area to fix some stray brush strokes that were there. The lips I left for quite a while until now because I wasn't quite sure how to do the highlights and shadows there without making it all smeary. So I tried a couple of things and finally I just decided to go with lines in purple and magenta uh, after doing a light background towards yellow for highlights if that makes any sense. I did have to wait for the yellow layer on the lips to dry, so I did the hair meanwhile, starting with a mixture of burnt umber and Prussian blue, and then gradually adding more blue to it. I do have to admit it was more from laziness than a deliberate choice at first, but then I liked the higher saturation the blue was getting, so I decided to just go with it. So I think at this point it was mostly noodling and fixing and trying to add interesting details and highlights to finish up the piece. I did end up using some black, but very sparingly. The problem with gouache is that the darks dry lighter, so I always end up adding a little bit of black to deepen the darkest shadows. Alright, and that's it. 
I don't think I hate the result. It's interesting and it was quite an experience painting this, uh, taking me outside of my comfort zone. I wonder if I can take what I've done here and sort of merge it with my regular, more naturalistic color palette to try to get something interesting. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Is it a success or should I scrap and try another approach to expressive color? In any case, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to press the thumbs up button. Pressing the subscribe button would also be much appreciated if you haven't already. As always, the materials I've used will be listed in the description below. There you will also find links to my other social media, my website and my Patreon where I post things like these for the Moon Jelly tier and up in higher resolution. Sea uh, Viper can also get full length non sped up videos to get a better look at the process. In any case, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video, which will be soon, I hope. Bye!